Hi, Year 13. Uh, so today we're going to look at religion in the United States of America. Um, one of the key arguments about secularisation is that the more developed a country and the safer a country, the less it will need religion. However, America seems to buck the trend. Okay? Um, so what we're going to be looking at today is what evidence is there for secularisation in America? Like, Are they truly as religious as they seem to give the impression? So just to give you an idea about the popularity of the different faiths around America, you can see the key at the very bottom there. Uh, the dark red is Baptist and the blue is Catholic. Okay, And there are a few other ones dotted around as well. So just have a quick look at that. This map is one I'm very interested in because it actually gives you the concentration of religious adherence. Okay? Uh, you should be able to spot the trend that it's very much in the middle of America that seems to be uh, dominated by religious adherence. Uh, some people sometimes call this you know, as the Bible Belt um, because uh, religiosity is so uh, popular in these areas. Okay? Uh, what tends to happen in America is the level of religiosity uh, dissipates the closer you get to the coast. Um, it's also very similar to the political voting map um, Democrats win more states around the ed edges of America, whereas the Republicans, which are traditionally much more Christian, are very popular in the centre of America. So religious diversity in the United States, as you can see, it is predominantly Christian, okay, with only 14.1% claiming to be secular. So it is a very Christian country when you compare it to Britain. It is worth making note that religion is far more socially accepted in America in the sense that it is normal, it's considered normal to attend, attend church every week, okay? And the language um, around religion is much more common in media. So, for example, um, this is a, a picture from 9-11 uh, and the, the headline um, is clearly... Um, a religious one, and this went out in the Chicago Sun Times. Okay, so this would have been one of the cities near the edges of America, but clearly a very religious country. Um, Will Herberg argued that religion in the United States of America has undergone a process of what he called internal secularization. Okay. Because religion in America has tried so hard to fit into the modern world, he argued it's actually become less religious, a sense of um, internal de desecularization. Can you think of any ways religions practiced in America that actually doesn't seem that religious? And how far has it been removed from what we might associate with a typical religious service, for example? So uh, Herberg argued that the main purpose of religion has changed to being one of more personal and individual goals as opposed to the goal of going to heaven and seeking salvation. So if religion is not providing um, collective goals, uh, what function can it no longer be providing for its members? He argued that religious diversity has added to this internal secularisation of religions. People are much more accepting of other people's religions. Uh, he made the argument that if we accept that there are other religions, then therefore surely we must believe that our own religion can't be the truth if we accept that there are other people's views. Um, it is worth noting that in terms of the, the map with the graph we looked at before, uh, within the Christian faith, there are many, many denominations in America. Okay? However, Americans seem to be far more involved in the religious life of the nation, and they spend far more money on religion and much more time than their European counterparts. So surely this means they are religious. When thinking about religion in America, you can't help but remember the Christian fundamentalist movement, sometimes referred to as the Christian right. And they are socially acceptable and they are a normal group to be a member of. Sorry, um, They are a political and social movement and organisation characterised by their strong support of conservative social and political values. So, for example, they are opposed to abortion and gay rights and to the teaching of evolution in schools. Okay, so if you look in the yellow box at the top there, there's an example of in May 2010, taxes, 
taxes. Texas signed in a law that all women thinking about an abortion had to have an ultrasound scan which would show the image of the fetus and other details in an attempt to make her reconsider. Now, as you can imagine, feminists have been outraged by this um, as it's removing the woman's right to choose or putting pressure on her to make a certain choice. Ruth and McKinney argue that the growth of the new Christian right and fundamentalist groups in the USA are evidence of continuing importance of religion. However, what else might be causing the rise of the Christian right? Can you think of anything else that might be leading to people being more um, uh, overtly religious and anti-gay and anti-abortion? So when it comes to American religion, you can't uh, help but talk about religion and the state. What's interesting is that the separation of the church and the state is a key concept in the American government and the American constitution. The First Amendment of the constitution states that the church and the state are to be kept very, very separate. However, Robert Bella claimed that most Americans actually share common religious characteristics expressed through civil religious beliefs, symbols and rituals that provide a religious dimension to the enti entirety of American life. Um, he argued, as we looked at before, that Americans are so proud of being American that it's almost like a religious devotion. But what's also really interesting is that it would be almost impossible for an atheist to get voted in as a, as a president in America because religion is so ingrained in the psyche of the population. Anyone who's not religious is seen as a threat to families, a threat to um, heterosexual relationships, and it's very, very tough for someone who's not a Christian to get elected. Um, it's when you look at politicians and their debates, they frequently discuss their religion when campaigning, and many churches provide finance um, for politicians running for election. Uh, many religious figures are very politically active, and they actually gain quite a lot of TV time and are often interviewed about their opinions about political candidates. So keeping the support of the local bishop, for example, is seen as really important. As a result, many, many candidates who stand for president, in fact, all candidates that stood for president recently, have all been married with children and seem to stand for you know, a traditional Christian values. There are Christians in both the Democratic and the Party and the Republican Party, but the evangelical Christians, uh, the ones that are much more vocal about their religious views and their support for more traditional ways of life, tend to support the Republican Party, whereas more secular voters, non-religious, support the Democratic Party. Um, if you look at the next couple of slides, you'll see some quotes. Um, this is George Bush. Um, the quote starts, I'm mindful, is one of the earlier ones. Um, and if you look at the second three, um, sorry, if you look at the first two quotes, the white and the green, that was him before he was elected. In the run-up to his uh, election, and while he was in uh, government, the second two quotes, the pink and the second white one, okay? So what seems to have changed in terms of his priorities about Christianity? And likewise, Barack Obama um, has also um, spoken about, in his book, The Audacity of Hope, which he wrote before he was in power, he actually talks about um, having a very mixed background, a mixture of um, Islamic and uh, Greek mythology, uh, talking about Buddhism, and he also talks about the role of Christianity. But he talks about it in a sense that he had a very mixed religious upbringing, However, um, in 2007, um, he was quoted as trumpeting the power of salvation of faith and asking a church audience in South Carolina to help him become an instrument of God and join him in creating a kingdom right here on earth. So really religious language coming from a democratic candidate, which is very interesting. Stark and Bainbridge um, explain uh, the plethora of religions on offer uh, by using uh, relig religious market theory. Stark and Bainbridge are postmodernists, okay? So they argue that there is no secularization in the United States, and they argue that as um, a religion will only decline as a demand for it declines. And they argue that the participation, participation increases when the supply of religion increases, a bit like businesses. 
So um, where, uh, where participation in religion increases in America, we get way more new religious movements and evangelical churches. In fact, they argue that religions go through a perpetual cycle of decline, revival, and renewal. As one religion declines, this leaves a gap in the market for another one to pop up. They refer to the example of televangelism. This is uh, the idea of religious worship and, um, on, via TV. Pray to the Lord and send me all your money is one of the key ideas. Now, Stark and Bainbridge have argued that because of the growth in televangelism and new channels offering it, this suggests that people in America are becoming more and more religious and are finding loads of different ways of expressing it. If you Google Benny Hinn Ministries, you might be able to find a video um, of Benny Hinn. He claims to have seen God. He's about six foot two, long brown hair and eyes that can look right through you. Um, reports allege that Hinn lives a very lavish lifestyle with the funds intended for charitable purpose purposes, preaches a self-serving prosperity theology message, and manipulates individuals on healing crusades for personal gain. However, he gets a fortune via people ringing in and donating to his church. So televangelism is really a great example of postmodernism and religion, where religions move to the media in order to share its message, and it's become a product that people seem to think they can purchase. Um, their main aim seems to be to raise money through television appeals and convert new recruits. Um, in the next slide, I've got an image of the Holy Land Experience, which is a theme park um, based around the Bible. However, Steve Bruce is really critical of this idea. He argues that televangelists are creating nothing new. Okay? He argues that they rarely convert anyone. The people who watch are normally already converted. And actually, all it does is reinforce established attitudes and beliefs that have already been established. Um, their use of TV, though, has made them seem far more powerful, influential than they really are. Uh, so, in summary, the United States is religiously plural, although broadly Christian, while the European countries tend to be religiously homogeneous, so the same. In the United States, a religious market exists compared to the religious monoculture in Europe, predominantly Christian. Religion is a much more pervasive phenomenon in the United States. You cannot get away with it. It's everywhere, it's in headlines, it's on people's mantelpieces, it's on people's lawns. And it can be found in more aspects of society than in Europe. However, Brian Wilson, who we looked at last lesson, claims that this outward appearance of religiosity is just superficial. And if you scratch beneath the surface, people are no more religious than in Europe. And actually, they use religion in order to appear respectable to their uh, fellows in the community. And don't worry about this. Thank you very much, Year 13.